love sending Kim news because she gets irritated. Whatever irritates Kim, I like Too to funny, do. Too funny, mama. Too funny, mama. Too funny, mama. Too funny, mama. What's up, y'all? Hi. This is uh, Kim Whitley. Bye. Sherry Shepard. Oh, look how cute you look. Oh, you got my fruit bags basket I see behind you that I sent you. Yeah, I got to talk to you about that. Oh. And we're off. Yeah, yeah I got to talk to you about that fruit basket. Yeah, I, I like it. I, I see that I sent you a nice big old fruit basket. Um, we, can I talk to you about that fruit basket back there? Matter of fact, let me go yeah. get that fruit basket. Uh-oh. Let's uh -oh. predict what's wrong, Kim. Uh -oh. Why she got to walk? I ain't never seen nobody walk two steps and be sexy. Why she get on my knee? Who does that? Who walks and hit pops their hip? This is what Kim oh. got me. Uh, I'm not sure why. What was this for? Um, I think that was for me messing up last week. I think for um the promotion. I think I was supposed to come on the show and then I messed up. How long have we known each other? Wait, hold up. Hold, first of all, you you don't really like flowers. So I you like fruit and stuff. I like purses. I like oh. I like jewelry. What I I but thank you for the granny. No, I'm not going to say thank you for these granny smith apples and some uh, uh gua, I don't even know what the hell a guava look like, but I think that's a guava. I know what it tastes like with Hennessy. <laughs> Over here, some peanuts and stuff. Then you give me oh, some. You trying, you trying to kill me? There's M and M's uh, attached to some pretzels. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. First, um, of, all, first so I, of all, I saw this basket and I said to my assistant Edie when she unwrapped it, I said, "Oh, a fan sent these. How nice." She said, "No, Sherry, they're from Kim." I said, "Who, Kim what? Jasper?" She said, no, not this Kim Jasper. Who Kim, Kim Buckingham? She said, no, not Kim Buckingham. She said, Kim Whit. I said, stop. Kim Washington? No, not Kim Washington. She said, this Wait a minute. Fruit Wait a minute. Basket, these Fiji apples, Granny Smith apples, a cantaloupe, and a grapefruit. Wait a minute. Um, they, Wait a minute. You, I know you're not saying that from Kim Whitley. Kim Whitley from <laughs> California? Or Kim Whitley oh, from please. Jacksonville. Chris, Chris, you gotta help me. Jacksonville I... sent me a, a <laughs> granny apples in a cantaloupe and a grapefruit with M and M stuck on a pretzel. Chris, 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 and I took her. Who got in her house that are so expensive? And came with it and stole all my jewelry from my house. Oh, who has my wigs that are so expensive? Wait, Did Chris. You know? Did you get the wig I sent you, or or just because I love you? Did you get that custom made wig that I sent you? That, that is bald headed Jaro people over in the land of Mujaro. They're six Ooh. bald headed Jaro priests. You get that wig that I sent you that I'm still paying on? Wait, wait With Karma? Karma? You heard of Karma? Sherry, are there any golden delicious apples in there? Ain't nothing wait, golden wait. in this basket. <laughs> This is might as well have been a fruitcake from my auntie bunny. At and least. The, and, don't, is... and I don't want to hear nobody on the live tone. You should be grateful. You should be grateful. I've known this girl for 30, 30 años. Wait, 30, gotta, wait, 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 30 you don't years. Understand. You don't understand. When I get Kim, Chris, Chris, I can't when save I you. Kim, I thought she was joking. I didn't know I really sent that. Yeah, no, you. Yeah, you don't even know you sent it. She meant to. She meant to send that to one of. Did you no, tell no, me no. That? I said send that to the guy who takes her garbage out. That would be very polite. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Did you tell your assistant? It's you, and she said, Miss Whitley, what's the budget? And you said, I don't know, make about $50. Is that what you told Because let me tell you, when they called and told me Kim's wig is Wait, ready, they stop. said, My eyelashes are made for her. Off. I need you to stop. My eyelashes are No, no, no. Off. No, when they, I didn't know that was from me. You don't understand. I didn't send the proof back. Where's the proof? Is there a card, Sherry? Can we get... You didn't know this was 
from you. This fruit basket. Wait, 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 wait. Sherry, Sherry, Sherry. There's there's a Granny Smith down at the bottom. You didn't even mention that. I did say Granny Smith, but she didn't listen. And then she put some grape jelly in here. Where's the grape jelly? The grape, she could put some grape jelly in here. I don't even know what this thing is. What is this? Please stop. You stop. And it's all what is what is you know what I'm so I'm all right so, the first first ten people you're in a drawing if you share the stream let us know and uh, we'll please, see if we can get the stop. fruit basket sent to no, you. I want to talk about I, I want to talk about wait 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 I can't. the girl asked me can, when she came to be on the show my wait. premiere week, my oh, premiere God. week she loved all my wigs. Okay. And Kim said, I want a wig like this. So to, to ensure that she didn't steal one of mine, yep. I did. I did. I'm going to get, me. me get you one made. They measured her head. And I said, I'm going to get you a good one. I'm going to get you one where they got to go to the I, land of Mujaro, get the priestesses, hold them hostage, and shave their head. That's the hair I'm going to get. It's mm -hmm. anointing. So the girl made the wig beautiful, highlights, everything so soft. Feels like it feels like heaven. And she told me the price, and I said, "Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to get on a payment plan to pay for this wig." I want my friend, one of my best friends in the world, to have the best. And I don't care how much it costs. I don't care how long I gotta make payments on this hair. Uh, you know, anything. My friend, she's got towels and bath mats for me that cost a lot because I want my friend to have the best, like literally the best. I, do have I want her to have the best. So okay, when I so, and I don't do these things because in the hopes that one day I'm gonna have a talk show and one of my best friends in the world is gonna be okay. something so, like amazing. When she you when Tom joined me, I like Louis Vuitton, Christian Louis Vuitton, and Kim got extra stuff. I didn't say nothing. I didn't tell that you know. Oh, I didn't tell you one of my best friends. So anything when we go out to eat, we go to these expensive steakhouses, and I go, no, let me get the bill. Let me get the bill. I pay for it. What'd you What'd you do whenever Kim had an audible with uh, Lena Waithe coming out? Oh my gosh! I stayed on. Let me. The first, oh, let me even tell you about that audible. The audible. This girl's supposed to come on the show like in person, but she couldn't That's make. That's why. Oh, she was God. She was busy that, getting sending you that, that fruit. Some PG apples and a Granny Smith and some jelly. So she's supposed to come on the show. And she couldn't because she's got a surprise thing that she's doing. She can't announce yet. And she Kim was hysterical. Now, we already in New York. I'm three hours ahead. I got to be in bed by 9 o'clock because I have two shows I have to take in the morning. I'm exhausted. But Kim said, I need to talk to you because I'm upset. I called my friend. I stayed on the phone with her, calming her down, letting her know the promises of God. God ain't going to leave her. People going to know about this audible. And I said, Kim, I'm going to talk about it tomorrow. I called all the producers and woke them up because they were asleep. You know why they were asleep? Because we got a show to do the next morning. Because I was supposed to be asleep, but no, my friend needed me. And I said, I called my love. I woke my love. I said, we got to get Kim on the show. I don't care how we do it, but we got we to gotta make it so Kim be on the show. So I said it. I said, Kim, I'm going to say it the next day. And Kim, we got cut off. Kim called me back. Please called stop. me back. She was upset. And I, 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 I love you. Everything going to be okay. Everything is going to be, I'm exhausted. You know why I'm exhausted, Chris? Because I'm supposed to be up in the next morning because I got to do a talk show. That daytime Sherry. TV uh -huh. show. Wait, so which producers did you call? Did How did John take call, the call? I called John Murray. I called Patrick. I called Greg. I called Suzanne. I called Norman. Should I keep going? I called all of them, made all of them get up. And they were so tired. You know why they were tired? Because we got a show we got to do. So I stayed on the phone with Kim and I was like, girl, I got you. I said it the next morning. I said it the next morning and I posted. I got like three posts in a row, Kim, saying, y'all got to support my girl. And then she even came on, wearing my ring, mind you, that she took from my house. <laughs> that was looking. So when I got this basket of fruit, and I thought it was from a fan, I was just like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. A fan sent me some fruit. But when they told me it was Kim Whitley, I said, oh, she sent me apples and jelly. Okay. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you get the wig yet? Did you get the wig from the six priestesses that they shaved bald? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Oh, matter of fact, here's my credit card. I'm going to have to, I need to make a payment on that wig that I got you. Yeah, wait a minute. Look, Chris. Yeah. Make that. Uh -huh. that wig. 
are getting ready for the podcast. I kept looking. I was like, what is that behind you? <laughs> and she just said, I want that. What is that behind you? I want that. Oh, Did I it say something believe. in the card like you're the apple of my eye or something terrible up, like Chris. that? <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know Kim really wrote it. Further. Kim, you know, she's a spokesperson for WW. Oh, my God. And at times, Oprah likes to send things oh. to say, thank you, Kim. I've seen the extravagant gifts that Oprah sends, and Kim wears it on her shoulder, puts it in the middle of the table, like extravagant gifts. And I go, Kim, because you deserve that. And people should be getting you gifts like that, because that shows you what they think of you. So I guess when I get this, when I get jelly. Wait a minute. First of all, that's a New York fruit basket. Look how big it is. Look at that. Yes, I know, because I got six apples, a mango, an orange, a kumquat, and a grapefruit. That's I'm an jealous. entire aisle of a bodega. She's yes. got a kumquat. She got a kumquat and an apple. And I got, I got, I got pretzels here. I can't even think. Of, I got pretzels. But if you can see, M and M's are in there. She know damn well I'm diabetic. Okay. Well, Sherry, look at the bright side. The next time Jennifer Lewis come, come comes on your daytime show to sing a song, she can talk about the M and M's and pretzels. Not to mention, no, it must even go there with Jennifer Lewis. Tell Jennifer Lewis secrets that I don't tell nobody. That I only tell Kim, but Jennifer, yeah. as I'm crying because Jennifer Lewis is going to play for me, she blurts out things that I go, nobody knows that but Kim Whitley. Yeah. Um. So yeah. thank you for the uh, but, for but, your six. But, yeah. but, in, but in my defense, do you remember the birthday you had, and you was really on this apple kick? I brought you a huge basket. I went to the store. Picked out the apples myself because you were into Fiji apples. And I placed them on your countertop because you ain't the flower girl. And I said, she loves apples. All she wanted to do was eat apples. I handpicked you all these apples and I put that in your kitchen on your counter for your birthday. Remember that? Uh, like six years, seven years ago. It wasn't that long ago, but it might've yeah. been three. It before Because I was eating it with the peanut butter, I think. Yes. Yes, you were eating it with peanut butter. You was into apples then. I didn't know you got out your apple phase and come quiet. I didn't know. <laughs> but, that wait, 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 careful. This is a family show. But I was into the apples. Uh, just You bought it just because I was into the apples. But I didn't have like the premiere of a talk show or like all of this stuff. Wait a minute, wait a minute. See, that's why you got to really check people. Chris, now this to me was probably the funniest thing. She got me good because I didn't know that was from me. <laughs> but wait, but wait, because I was looking at it like, okay, because that was last week. But let, can I ask you something? Did yes. you ever get the candle I sent you for your premiere? Great question. Now, that was expensive. The candle? The Joe no, Malone I... candle? Oh, you're talking about the big old bag with the candles and stuff? You would send me two with the, yes, yes. That's downstairs in my glam room. Ain't hey, this some shit? I don't think I that's been brought up on the show, Kim. I got no, I'm, I'm, but she didn't even thank me. She didn't know. That's, she didn't know. She didn't remember. She was getting so much stuff that first week from so many celebrities to say congratulations, Sherry, and she got the big old thing from Oprah. I was gonna my say <laughs> expensive Joe Malone candles. Oh, let me put those on the floor by the glam table. <laughs> Question, Sherry, are you currently holding up your computer desk with Kim's gift? It, no, I'm not going to put it up under the table like she did my book, which my book is probably on the floor underneath her table so that it doesn't I think Wait but a I'm minute. Very and I sent you a little speaker this week. I think about you. They little gifts, but they gifts. <laughs> I did get the little speaker. Thank you very much. I did. Will you show me where it was on sale? <laughs> Kim show, she's like, he gonna speak his look, it's so still, you need to get one. Yes, and, and she sent me one. <laughs> I did. I did. And I'm sick of your phone dying. I bought you the best external charger to keep charge. When you charge your phone, you charge it. You throw it in your purse, you straight. You should never have your phone run out of battery. I have you know it. what you need? I know what I gotta get you. Now I gotta get you a charger station. Somewhere you charge everything is when you put it down, it's charged. And you pick and it up on your way out the door. 
you like to get me uh, gifts that you like instead of going, what is this the one song with apples? <laughs> you don't give me gifts that you go, what is Sherry like? You like you you only got me them apples, not because I like apples. You got me them apples because you was tired of me eating up your apples. True. Oh, that's right. You were taking my apples out the house. You got you those gifts out of me coming over the house eating slicing I up. I forgot about apples. that. That's right. You were like, eating you, you were eating. When you give me gifts, you don't you you like you don't go. I give you gifts that I know you want. I give you gifts that I know Kim would like this or but, things that I But no gifts, the base gift is two thousand and up. You like nice stuff. I'm a regular girl. I just, you know, give me anything. Your stuff, I got to go into a store with a security guard in the front. <laughs> How about that? I'm See, having Chris? a hot so bad. This is I, ridiculous. Lady. Oh, shoot. Look what I found. A what? juicy hamburger. Oh, Kim, why are right. you doing that? I can't huh? eat. I got my braces on and I can't eat no food. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So much pain right now. My teeth are killing me. Why? Why do you have braces? Because you got a talk show? Your teeth are straight. No, they're not. I got a big gap right here. I got a Michael Strahan gap right here. And I got a gap down here. And I've, I've been I've been putting it off and putting it off. And I went to the dentist and my teeth was all growing crooked. And uh, I got all of the silver fillings out of my mouth, and they replaced right, that them. That was good. That was good. And uh, and uh, yeah, I just went and got my. I got Invisalign, so I'm just I'm learning yeah. how to talk with the Invisalign in my mouth. Invisalign, Invisalign is they work. They shouldn't have cost that much, but no, but I, I, was, I had my teeth whitened too. So that's also they got this new procedure where they whiten your teeth, and you know when you get your teeth whitened, it's real sensitive, and it's like sensitive, the air. Yes. There's a new procedure that they do where they put some, they get like do a laser thing, and one time it hit and it hurt, and that's it. It was not sensitive no more. There's a new procedure, which oh. that's why I called. Can I ask and you something? It, did, it, did it whiten your teeth? Did you see a difference? Yeah, my teeth are really white. Your teeth were always white to me. Don't be acting like I'm all in your mouth. Let me see the bottom ones that the people be talking about on Instagram. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yep, they look good. Yep, she got oh, those. I had the two yellow spots. Yeah, those, that was also part of my. Those are gone because they they got some kind of new procedure. My mother was on some kind of a uh, antibiotic uh, when when she was pregnant with me. A lot of these women use this antibiotic, and it made parts of your teeth yellow. And I always had these two yellow spots, and they never know. came. Off. Yeah, it was part of my teeth. Like people would try to drill it, it didn't come off for years and literally last month they got this new procedure that they can cover it up so you can't see the yellow anymore when i was in school people used to call me wow. butter melted butter and they did on, on social media would talk about the, my bottom teeth they're right here oh, I didn't I can, know that. and you were able to fix that yeah so it was part of so it's, it's, it's right here it's just white now look what they a talk show will do look at what <laughs> I, got I can't invisible. believe you got Invisalign's because now you're going to have to get a retainer in the back. Let me tell you why. I had Invisalign's, right? Just to fix this crooked tooth here. It's, mm -hmm. it's still crooked. I let it go. Can't put my Invisalign's. So I have to start all over. And once I got it straight, I should have gotten a retainer that goes in permanently. Don't say, oh, yeah, I'm going to keep wearing my Invisalign. You're not. Get you a retainer that'll hold them where they're supposed to be and be done you with know, it. You don't have to do that with braces. When you get the braces, I think it right. Will... Well, people, you still got to wear retainers. You do. Yeah, you got to wear them, but I don't think you're wearing them as frequently because these retainers with the Invisalign, it was like you got to go to bed with them. I'm like, go to bed with them. Mm -hmm. um, it will stop but... you from eating a lot because you can't eat with those Invisalign, even though I did. Like I want, I got some chicken downstairs that I want to eat, and I was like, "Dad, but I gotta floss and brush again before I put the, the the trays on my teeth." I was like, "Oh my god!" But um, yeah, so I just gotta learn. I gotta make sure I talk the right way. Uh, because now my you're problem, not gonna wear them during the show. Yes, I am. Okay. Yes, I am. I just oh, gotta make sure when I start talking fast that I that I don't let it you know trip me up. That's when why I'm doing it. 
start mm. spitting on people, when you start spitting on your guests, <laughs> that would be horrible. It was Tommy bad. On today, how was Tommy? I can't wait to see it. I got to watch it on YouTube. Wonderful. He was really, really wonderful. And um, Layla Hathaway and Boney James performed. Good girl, you're not in and out. I'm so hungry. Oh, uh, oh, well, let me tell you something. I turned my phone off. Sorry. I'm going to tell you, you had a hot show today. You had a hot show starting with me on the show and then Tommy Davidson. But when I saw that you was having Layla Halfway and Boney Jam, I was like, this girl on her way. She no. Her way. You know who coming on tomorrow? Who? Mark Curry. Oh, he's so funny. He's Mark so Curry, funny. let me tell you something. He don't need but 15 seconds. He gonna have you cracking up. He's in the laugh lounge. I love Mark Curry because they're both on tour with uh, Cat Williams, who I asked to come on the show. I asked Cat to come on the show. How'd that conversation um, go? Man, I'm waiting on that. I'm waiting on the answer back. He, you know, Cat will respond to me all the time. But I said, can you come on the show? Zilch. So you got no response yet. I don't want to come on my show. Um, Kim, Kim, what would it be like if if Cat did come on Sherry's show and you were Sherry and Sherry was Cat? I oh okay. Hi, Cat. How you doing? Um, welcome to the show. Uh, you're on tour. Um, right now you look you look fantastic. How is it? How is it going on? How is it on tour, Cat? Well, you know, going on tour is just it, it's a, a malibrium of palladium of just circumstantial stuff. You know, it's everything is good on tour, Kim. And how are you, Kim? With and how are you? <laughs> we just do that. And how are you? Oh, I'm I'm fine. Um, what do you Kim, think you about? Know I've always loved you, Kim. You know, I've always oh. been in love with you, Kim. Oh, you you probably had that. I'm just gonna brush over that I've always. I've always loved you, Kim Whitley. Uh, that, that's on a national talk show right now. I think we could talk about that in the green room. Indubitably um, so. Indubitably so. Indubitably so. Oh, God. Yeah, that can come with the word. Mm, you're good, yeah. That was a good bite, Kim. We all heard I'm, that one. <laughs> That, you know, Kim ain't no good. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Two Funny Mamas. We're live because it's just so crazy. We don't get to, like, uh, do our podcast the way that we were doing it before. We started this podcast during COVID. Wait, are we during- live? Yeah, we're live. You didn't say we was going live. Kim, Chris said, thought- ladies, we're gonna, how you feel about going live? I said, it's okay with me. And, you, and, this, and this is the problem, because this is what you was doing with Chris Starr. You was like this the whole time. I was texting. Exactly, Kim. We got a podcast, and Kim and Chris said, how do you ladies feel about going live? I looked at the camera, I said, we're fine. You've been texting the whole time, and he said, okay, we're about to go live. And I said, Kim, are you okay with going live? He's like, yeah, whatever you want. But I wouldn't have been eating a whole hamburger. Yeah, let's not. Let's back that up. Yeah, you would. <laughs> yeah, you would, Kim. Yeah, you would. You eat all the time. And we said we were going live. This is a live po- Read some comments, please. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. It's uh, Chris Denman here at St. Louis at uh, the Great Midco Studio. Kim Whitley enjoying a uh, protein <laughs> in and out. Irene is in the house. Burra, S. Burr is in the house. They're all laughing and uh, saying Kim's crazy. We all knew it was live. M.M.'s got it says award-winning. Earlier, um, a few people were commenting that uh, this is literally making their day. The live was surprise. It's making their day. They're having a good time. And we've got a poll up at the moment. Sherry, you're going to love this. Uh, Dead heat right now. The poll is for Fruit Basket Gate. Team Sherry, 50%. Team Kim, 50%. We've got a a dead heat. Boom. Boom. The people that's Team Kim, because they love you so much, Kim. Yeah. And they and they feel that I should be grateful that Kim even bought me a gift basket. And that normally is so. There's two people that I because I'm getting I'm not taking these Invisalign now. But there's two people that if they bought me a fruit basket, I'm going to lose it. That is Nisi Nash and that is Kim Whitley. <laughs> Both of them. 
Because let me tell you about both of them. Niecy Nash's birthday passed, and I didn't get to get her something. No, no, it was a wedding anniversary. It was a wedding. And, and she what? called me and she's like, hey, friend, uh, where's my gift? I uh -uh. said, I, I didn't get it yet. And she said, so what are you going to get? <laughs> That's hilarious. And Niecy will tell you what she wants. I, yeah. bought that girl, mm -hmm. I bought that girl a huge air fryer that came. Mm -hmm. um, so these are the two people I've been friends with a long, long time. Okay, so the, get, okay the fruit basket. Sherry not grateful. Sherry not grateful for this. And wait a minute. Why I got to be grateful when she know I got diabetes? <laughs> Why do I gotta be great? You know what? I was about to apologize. Wait a minute. Everybody. I should. I'm sorry. I should have sent you a head from David. This is M and M's. This is, is some kind of white chocolate on a uh, chocolate, and I don't know. And this is a uh, brittle. Pete, everything is gonna send my blood sugar up. This is pretzel right here. Those this are, is all carbs. It converts to sugar. Jeffrey. It's for Jeffrey. Yeah, uh-huh. And Kim awesome. coming through. This is a, this is jelly. I haven't had jelly in nine years. Okay, Dang. because I'm diabetic. All right. Okay. Maybe I should have sent like one of the yeah. people Harry and David with the boxes on top of each other or something. No. And the people who are team Kim that's like, you should be grateful. Kim didn't even know she sent it to me. So it's not like she <laughs> She took time out to say, "What would my friend like?" But so she, it's just so disrespectful. Okay, wait. Let's talk right, about. Kim, I got, I got something for you, Kim. We got. Okay, wait, we wait. Look at it. Look at it. Wait, hold up. Wait, wait, hold up. Call wait, it out. Call her out on the camera. Wait, wait, wait. Look at, look at the wall. Look at the wall. Sherry, Sit go check that. Down. <laughs> Sit down. Look at it. Look at it. Ah, oh, if you don't come and sit down, if you don't sit down. Boy, this how they act. Look at boy, they lose mm -hmm. a little weight. Yeah. This how they act. That's, this how they act. that's a network I TV wall. I cleaned up my guest room. I cleaned it up. My, you did my clean up the guest room. But the fact I've been looking at that basket since before we started, I was like, "What is that? What is and she that?" Got and I want it. I want it. I was like, "That looks like a lovely gift." And I know I said send you fruit because you know how you are, but I didn't realize it was going to have candy and different. I would have probably picked. You be appreciative. On that, we've got. You want some comments, Wait, Sherry? We've no, got no. some. I want, I, oh, go ahead. Go with the comments. Go on, Chris, because I got to apologize for something else. Okay. Well, here we get some comments, and uh, I think we'll get to that picture in just a second. Okay. So, to back up your point, Sherry, yeah. uh, Ava Stewart says I voted for Kim and didn't even know the story. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. There you go. Jenny says, Sherry, you're looking good. Darletha says, let Kim eat. Ratings are through the roof. Uh... <laughs> and, I have to, and, I, and I'm going to thank my friend for helping my ratings be through the roof. Because when Kim came on on my premiere week, the ratings went up, up, up. Because people love Kim Whitney. Because we were foolish together. We comedy go together. And because she's oh. doing something that's special, like literally y'all, Kim was supposed to be coming on my show once a month. Like, so you could like really see the two funny mamas. Kim and I had agreed to that. But Kim uh, booked something that's very special. And I'm so proud of her. And she's not able to do it. So, you know, when I get these Zooms, they're really great. And the ratings went up because of the Zoom. Because people love Kim Whitley. Even when she acted fool. When she knows I'm going to be irritated. When she does stupid, dumb stuff like this. But I, but I, 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 I can't stand that. That Kim was today's knows. show. Tell the people it was today's show, and I want to hear. But this is what I got to apologize. Y'all remember out. at the beginning of the Sherry Shepherd show, her arm and her hand was really big. Y'all remember that? Did I talked about text? her. I sent her a text, and then today Sherry sends this back to me. Chris, look <laughs> how big my hand is. It, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it was that big. It looks like it is. That's a photo of Kim's TV. If we could go full screen with that photo, I think it'll really accentuate the. Uh... Look how big your hand is, Kim. Oh, oh my God. Look how big and Crip Keeper it is. I was like, why? With my why ring I took from my house. I should have done it faster so, so nobody could catch the picture. <laughs> and you talked about me so bad, you and Andre, about we my did. hand. On, and I literally, 
I found a video that where Kim and Andre was looking at it and laughing at me and talking <laughs> about me like I would never see the video. I sat there. They called me everything. Reggie oh. Ralph, everything about my hand. But we, it was a sound. We kept going. Ugh. Every time you moved I your hand, we were like. Ugh. Ugh. I, it was so. I was so self-conscious on the show forever. I'm screaming at everybody. You got to fix my hands because Kim is talking about me every day. So I said to Kim when she said, look at my hands. I said, you got the wreck and Ralph hands and God don't like ugly Kim. That's because you talked about me so bad. I did. I it feel, happens but, but I want to tell our fans, let me tell y'all something. I went on, if you get a chance, go on YouTube and watch Sherry Shepard's show from today. Uh, let me tell y'all something. I've had fun on shows before and I've had fun with Sherry, but today interrupting her show was my pride and joy. I laughed afterwards. I laughed during because what do we say on Two Funny Mom? As soon as it comes on, I love irritating Sherry. Sherry hates for me to put my face up to the camera. She hates for me to rock. Y'all know all the stuff she hates. If I had some chicken, I'd have had it with me this morning. When I tell, look at it, look at it. When I tell you, when I put my eye, I almost peed on myself. When I had my eye on that camera, I looked at you, you was like, oh, I'm a killer. I literally was so irritated. I was like, why is her eye on the camera? We got four minutes for this prompt info to get Audible out there, Kim on Audible, and this girl's doing this dumb putting her eye all on the thing. I was so mad at you. Let me tell you, it was it was a big show. I had a, a really important interview with Kevin Johnson from the Post-Dispatch today. He's a big fan of you all. He did catch the show. He's a big deal in St. Louis. This is He's talking about our comedy show. I don't get a whole lot of shine. Okay, ladies? What's the first thing you brought up? He said he your loved girls, it. He said your girls killed it today. Killed it. So I can't escape it. So if Kevin's you no know, slouch in that department. I will say this. I'm so thankful for you. Whenever you come on, it's a highlight because I know that the audience is going to love you. The audience at home the studio audience, and when you pull back and showed your very beautiful, beautiful face, they went crazy. They knew it was you with your eyes because your voice is so, like, um, yeah. recognizable. Mary, Sherry, <laughs> you don't understand. You I, was laughing. I was laughing so hard because you could hear the audience. First, it was like, what? And then they, you, they just started, and Chris, that's what it is. When you hear an eruption, uh, yeah. It was a comedy. It wasn't. It well, let me tell you something, Chris. It wasn't, mm. and I, I know the difference. It wasn't the, oh, Kim Whitley's on the show, yay! It was the surprise, the friendship, the it, they they were so excited to they see were. me and Sherry together. It was that kind of roar, like, oh my God, they're back together. She's here, like, it, and I was irritated. It was, like it the tick, was, the tickle you get, like we did at the live show whenever you all were just absolutely yeah. crushing it, where you're like, oh, oh this so is this time. is spiritual. But the it's audience was like, uh, like, I think they people can sense the, the love and the friendship. And um, when you pull back and they erupted, like I've never seen anything like it. They love, you know, we got a great audience at the Sherry show. It is such a, they're amazing with their energy. But when you pull back, I mean, I literally, and I couldn't stop laughing because it was so beautiful. It was. Everybody, everybody behind the scenes was like, you know, Norman is in love with you. Everybody was just like, oh my gosh, every time she comes on, which is why it's so disappointing to me that you can't come on once a month until you finish your obligations, which are yeah, amazing. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm like, all you do your thing, sis, but um, mm. it's not going to be the same, you know, doing these things without you. Because literally, when Kim comes, we got a segment that we're going to do, you know, uh, Kim and Sherry take New York, and we're going to yeah. do all of this stuff together, wow. uh, Kim and I. Like we did in the premiere, oh. and so I I can't wait. Oh yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna I be love I, this. Is what I know is gonna happen, and this is what I hope happens. Selfishly, I want you to come on my show and do it. The ratings go up, but mm -hmm. I know what's gonna happen is you're gonna book something else where you're not able to make, which will make me very happy. That, that you know, you're gonna book your own thing, and so that's what but I'm the, looking for. That's what people say. It's great. I say, but we are comedy gold. 
it brings joy to my life when we are silly, you know, and stand today and all the sadness I've been going through. When I tell you today, wow, my friend. they just really made me happy. It just really, I have not laughed like that today. I was so having so like my body and just to irritate you was the joy <laughs> of my life. Oh man. Oh, oh my man. God. I, I was so just the joy. I felt like even though you were so far away, I was. I felt like I was with my friend again. I didn't feel like there was an audience. You know, I felt like yeah. it was me and you for that time. Because people don't understand, when Sherry would just drive by the house. We spent many hours if I, was, together. Hey, if, I, if I sped, if I wouldn't no. pass the limit, I was five minutes away. And so no. I would always come by Kim's house because she was so close. Or Kim would just drive by my house. That's how close we live. Yeah. So we was Can always... We that's the only way you can get the best of Kim too. You have to be in front of her. <laughs> if not you gotta be in the house and literally like you just come in the house of people around her. Yeah. yeah. And it was just like, it was that still. Remember when I came, I think we did the podcast and I went upstairs and took my clothes off. <laughs> yeah. You took a shower. Mm. Oh, I did. I took a shower. Oh, I came down. Jim had so many people at the house and I just came downstairs. I had a towel. Cause that's cause I had lost a lot of weight. I was feeling myself. I don't know. <laughs> Because he was eating apples. Oh, <laughs> I was eating. I was eating apples. <laughs> Kim, check your text. Okay. Oh God. And I right. just remember it was so normal just to be sitting at Kim's house with seventeen people with a towel. <laughs> Joshua yeah. came. He was. Like, Joshua looked. And he was like, "You have a towel on." And he just. Yeah. Like, hey. <laughs> he did. He did. Oh my gosh. Hey. What? Uh, Sherry, got, I got Sherry, you what you're gonna be gone for just a few minutes. Can you pop back on? Right, but I got I'm gonna go right in two more minutes. I'm gonna go right at 4 30. I gotta talk to Joshua School. But he's been doing good. So it's okay. not a long conversation. So this Sherry, is with, I just well, want to we can read some we can we can read some comments and hang out. Kim will jump back on, is what I was gonna okay. say. Okay, yeah. 14 goes, you guys download Audible, search for Kim, K Y M her Audible series. You've been getting the most amazing comments about your Audible series. Kim, you were trending. Oh, um, yeah, the, yeah. The series is funny. It was written and executive produced by Lena Waite. Kim is an executive producer. David A. Arnold, Andre, LaBelle, Jennifer Lewis, Kim Coles, Jess Hilarious. I mean, everybody. And it's a great series. So download Audible. You can listen yeah. to it driving. You're planting your garden. Uh, everything, ordering an apple basket for your friend. You can listen a, to it. It's a sitcom for your ears. Did you like the way I said that today? Yes, I love that phrase. A sitcom. I had to figure that out. Sitcom for your that. ears. You need to make a t-shirt of this. Kim, a sitcom for your ears. On oh, that's a, oh, I want a t-shirt. I do want a t-shirt. Good idea. Absolutely. Look, oh, no. Let me tell you my other favorite part today. My other favorite part was Chris. She was interviewing me like for real. And I just looked at, I said, oh, look at you being a little talk show host. Look at you being That's a talk my, show host. There's nothing uh, more Kim Whitley than that sentence. Always, always with the word little. We done talked about this. We done talked about, I talked to Will Packard about, I reminded him of David's thing. He busted out laughing. He said, I forgot about that. Look at you when you uh, tried to be a talk show host. Had me cracking up. Oh, I Have was cracking up. But you was fire today. Your outfit was fire. That short with the turtleneck. I was like, oh, now, now we talking. That was bad. Yeah, that all was right, good. Go through Joshua's uh, call. Okay. Sure, I'll talk to y'all in a minute. Yeah, jump let's back see. on. People are okay. freaking out in the comments. Uh, Makila John's loving it. Uh, Kim will be back on in just a second. Uh, I make that. I, what I just want to say about Kim, I'm so proud of Kim because this is a project uh, on Audible. If you have not heard it, and you can read some of the comments, Chris, because I would love to know if people have listened to it. Mm -hmm. um, Lena, this project um, w was birthed when Kim and I were working for Tom Joyner, when we were both on the Tom Joyner morning show. Uh, and that was like four, five years ago. And they were pitching it around Hollywood 
Lena had written it and you know, it didn't work out that way. And Lena said, well, I want to do this. I'm not giving up on this project. And so uh, they went to Audible and Audible picked it up because it was so funny. So it was literally, you know, a few years in the making. And when it came together, we were all sitting there reading the parts. I play Kim's best friend, Mo. I'm like her manager slash I'm a it. security. Yeah, guard. the security guard part was the perfect casting. That was the perfect job. I was job. security guard at the major, um, at the major studio. So I let in all the celebrities. So I'm her manager. And the thing about it is, you know what's so funny that Lena wrote? Lena wrote this part. This like, I'm always getting her the auditions, but Sherry Shepard has gone in before her because <laughs> Kim, Kim, <laughs> yeah. Kim Whitley plays a, like a D list or C list celebrity. And she's adopted this little boy from a crackhead uh, a mother. And, you know, she's trying to get her love life together. She's trying to get her comedy together. Her life is just crazy. And so it's all of the situations she gets in. But her friend Mo, her best friend, is always trying to get her on these auditions. But the problem is she'll tell her, Sherry Shepard came in before you, so I think she booked it. When I tell you, I would fall out every time. And Lena Wade... Le so Lena Waithe, y'all know Lena wrote Lena Waithe wrote Queen and Slim the movie. She's the executive producer and and, and uh, writer of The Shy mm -hmm. uh, Twenties, which Kim is also on. And I believe I'm missing a project that Lena um, had. Mm -hmm. She's got a movie that's out with uh, Niecy Nash, and she's an incredible writer. And so I would come in, and Lena would always say to Kim, "How come you can't be professional like Sherry? Sherry got here before you even got here, Kim." And when Lena talks, she don't be smiling. That's the thing. So Kim would come in with freaking all the stuff, bags and stuff. And, uh, what am I supposed to be uh, uh, Okay, uh, what y'all what y'all want me to do? And I would be sitting there because I'm studying my lines. And Lena would get on Kim all the time. She'd be like, why, why you can't do it like Sherry? Why you can't, Kim, read it over. She would make Kim do this thing 19 times because Lena also was directing. But when I tell you we had so much fun and then Jess Hilarious plays the crackhead mama, um, Kim Coles, I believe, plays her, maybe her therapist, Jennifer Lewis. It's just, have you listened to it, Chris? I have. Yeah, it's fantastic. It sounds great. It's, really it's It funny. sounds pro. It's it's one of those things that uh, you you hope it turns into more. But I, I see, I'm such a fan. You all are from that TV world and uh, and you always want to shoot for the oh network TV. I totally get it. I'm such a fan of Audible stuff, and I've been listening to podcasts since '09 or so, and then talk radio before that, even as a kid, dorky kid. I love this kind of stuff, so it's right up my alley, and they tell such a great story. It's easy to paint the picture in your head. Yes, yes, and I love it. Kim be cursing on there. It's just, it, and I'm just proud of her, and I hope that it goes further than this. I hope that somebody says, you know, this is a, would be a really funny, not even a sitcom. I mean, it would be funny as a sitcom, but it'd be funny as like a dramedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Either, either it could be a sitcom as well, but um, Kim is such a great actress and she's got such a great life. So to see this come to life and she was so worried and then, you know, she's always working. She booked another thing that she can't announce yet. So she'll be announcing it. And it's an amazing project with amazing people. So I think she'll be able to announce that in a, in a couple weeks. That's why she can't come to my show. Yeah, that's a big one. And uh, we've got yeah. some comments if you want them, Sherry. I don't okay. know if uh, you want to jump in. Hello, live in St. Louis. Uh, shout out to Key and uh, Kevin hey, hanging out today. Key, our uh, sound engineer. Right. She's killing it. Uh, Yoli Compton says, Kim, listen to your Audible, and it was good. Love, love, love it. Listen over and over. Andre, Andre Lavelle, the great Andre Lavelle is in the comments, says, y'all got to go to the studio. I had to do mine for my makeshift studio in my closet. That's because you're a doer. <laughs> you're a doer, Andre. <laughs> Andre played, um, is that Andre on the live? Mm -hmm. He's in the comments. It's crazy behind. Uh, Andre played, I, who did Andre play? I don't remember. Who if Andre he's not, if he's not live in the bathtub, he's, you know, he's always, we literally tell everybody how, so I'm going to read, I want to read some more comments. That's very important because I appreciate all these questions. Tell everybody how this, how this podcast works. We, <laughs> we hope that the two of you can get together. I'm doing an interview up the street. We were going to maybe do it at nine o'clock central tonight or Eastern tonight. Yeah. What happens? We get a text. We've got, 
we can start in 17 minutes. And then it's all hell breaks loose. We It works out. Thank God Key's here to help. I was down the street from the studio. You all are done up. Kim was done up, ready to roll. So it's always funny how this gets put together. So yes. I appreciate you're pushing 700 people right now. And I'm sure it'll be 1,000 before we know it. But thank you all for tuning in randomly on this. Uh, all thank right. Thank you for being so patient because, you know, doing this podcast uh, with me with me being in New York, I had to move to New York very quickly. And then Kim being in L.A. And we both booked, you know, we started it during the pandemic when we weren't working. Yeah. And so we would, those are the glory days that could get, I I had, I had had appointment time. You had standing appointment times to record. We had show prep. We had discussions. We had jokes. I had jokes prepared for Kim. Now it's. ah! (laughs) Now it's like, whenever we have a minute that we can get together and do this podcast, like literally the only time I had was right before I went to bed. And I said, I gotta, I gotta 45 minutes and I gotta go to bed. But something that I was, uh, had to do cancel. So I had this free time, and I'm thankful that you were able to do it, Chris. And Kim, she was dri- she, Kim did the podcast while she was driving last week, which we vehemently uh, stood against. By the way, yeah, we we'll did. go ahead and, as Midcoast Media's representative and uh, Sherry <laughs> she- Sherry Shepherd Incorporated, one more time put it out there. By the way, uh, thank you to all the nice comments. Uh, we and the team made the uh, that five minutes. We cut it up and made it into a, the coldest of cold opens for last week's show people were really enjoying that so uh, let's get some live chat what do you say okay uh i'll find it here in just a second um so we have kim was so damn good on the sherry show today i hope she can't be on every month she can at least do surprise visits whenever she can i think that's pretty pretty concrete a little bit of an open door for kim well y'all don't what you don't understand is a surprise visit is a lot to put together um, because Kim is working on the surprise thing that she can't tell you. So she's got to be cleared from work. So she actually doesn't have the time to do it um, until she finishes, which will be the, at the end of the year. Right. So hopefully she'll be able to come on in January. So we can get her. We're certainly going to try as this as she's working and she had to clear work to be able to, to do it. So I'm hoping that she can. Well, when you're the new host of uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in Europe, like, can't... oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. Was like... How great would that be if <laughs> if we linked her project on a live? If she's that the new get... host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in Europe over in Ireland. You I saw her so You saw her speaking French. <laughs> we, we... Said, if, if Kim had to move to Europe, I would be hot as fish grease oh she wouldn't go hang with richie rich you two are the personification of a best friend i love your friendship and the immense support you two give each other i love sherry and kim oh that's so kind what do you think of that sherry i think i love that someone had a a comedy question i'm sorry there's a lot of stuff coming through quickly so i'm gonna get to that uh drop your questions in if you got them for sherry kim will be back here in just a minute if you're just joining in we've got a surprise live and this is how our podcast goes. Kim has a conference with uh, Joshua's school, so she had to get off. <laughs> Who's okay? Here's something. I, I a little behind the scenes on this. Where are you at with the Laugh Lounge? That's my favorite. Yeah, obviously, that's where I'm gonna just even hearing that you did that segment. Where are you at with that? Are you happy with the way that's progressing? Your guests have been amazing. Um, yeah, I'm really happy. It's something that I had to fight for on my show. But I'm a stand-up comic, and so for me, uh, I've always dreamed about giving stand-up comics a platform. This show, the Laugh Lounge, because I get a lot of new comics who want to come on. This is a the Laugh Lounge is for comics that have been doing it for a while, and they don't have the platform. Like they can't just come on a show. There's no Arsenio anymore, you know, um, where they could just get on and do stand-up. So this is a platform for comics who are very. Uh, experience and who've been out there for a long time and they can come on the show for six minutes and do their jokes. I set them up and hoping that somebody will see them and go, wow, that person was really funny. Let me call them in for an audition or let me call them in for a meeting. You know, I want something to come out of it. And plus I feel like the audience needs laughter. I think that where we are at now, it's so doom and gloom. Every time you turn on, Social media is something that's like 
tearing up your spirit, stuff going on over in Europe, you know, the politics, this cycle of who's going to be president. There's a war in Europe. And I think that people need to laugh. So that was a lot of also why I wanted my laugh lounge on. I want, to, I want people to hold their stomachs and be like, oh, I can't even think about anything else because I'm laughing so hard. That's what Fantastic. I want. Fantastic. Look at that. Sherry's a woman of, the, woman of the people. A uh, couple comments as well. Alicia says, I like the laugh lounge the way it is. Jokes when answering questions. Alicia's always got uh, good critique. Always leaving uh, yeah, we were, some we good, were looking at good comments. Like, if they did stand up, like with a with a microphone, the problem with that is it's very is doing stand up for a daytime show is mm -hmm. not so good because people are not as loose as they are, and like they are at night when you go to a comedy club. It's awkward. So it's very very awkward. They're not gonna laugh as like they would. So we decided to do it. So it's kind of like, um, like politically incorrect where you get to you know, I ask you a question and set you up for your joke, which is a story. Yes. So. It's hard for comics who don't have good stories. You got to be a storyteller. So Mark Curry's coming on tomorrow. Very nice. I'm very excited. We had Craig Shoemaker on. He was hysterical. Uh, um, Sherry and Launer want to know when B Flat's coming on. B Flat is on the list to come on. I'm very excited. B Flat will be coming on. Um, definitely. You know I'm not gonna do the laugh lounge without B Flat. Uh, uh, Brad Williams is coming on. You know Brad Williams, don't you? I've I've interviewed Brad two or three times. He's uh he's a character and he'll he'll do really well with that stuff. I mean, he he just he's got great physical comedy and then he's got good jokes and good responses. And he's good Brad and then um Josh Wolf came on. Oh, how did that go? I didn't see that. Josh oh, is he's a storytelling God. son of a gun. He's great. Josh knocked it out of the park. And that's what I expect is when comics come on, I expect you to knock it out of the park. So uh, Josh Wolf came on. He was so funny. Um, so yes, B flat is coming on. It is so funny because there's another comic that I know and she was trying to get on. And I told John, I was like, it 25 more comics got to come on before she can get on. <laughs> so uh, B flat that's will that be works. coming. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, shout out to everybody in the live chat. Don't forget to thumbs up the live for those who are new. Hit that subscribe and notification button. Look at Pac ninety three. I I love that about your fans too because they're all um they're all producers in their own right. <laughs> they're all helping out. That's so that's so cool. And make sure you share the stream as well. How and have, download Audible in 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 um for support Kim, Kim Kim's Audible sitcom. It's on Audible dot com. K Y M. Make we sure need you do that. Like, we need this to be hitting the top of the of the charts. It shows the power of of everything that you do. But when you have this independent form as well, I mean, people come on here. Yeah. You, have you know, seven hundred people hanging out randomly. Uh, how about this, um, Kiana, Sherry? How have you and Jeffrey adjusted to New York? Um, Jeffrey has adjusted nicely. He's in school. He has made a couple friends. He's like, but mom, this is what he said to me. But mom, who am I going to ask to the prom? And I'm like, oh my goodness. Prom. These yeah. Prom. Oh my gosh. But it was so funny because his homecoming at a school in California, they had a homecoming and he there was nobody he could ask out. He went by himself. And so Nisi Nash, she told me that her daughter Dia would go with Jeffrey. So I said to Jeffrey, Dia will go with you. And he said, okay, whatever. And he said, how <laughs> old is he? he said, how old is she? And now, did you see uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, Chris? I'm not going to watch that. I'm old enough. I was. I remember being a little kid and being like, "Am I going to get eaten?" Like, no, it, <laughs> like it, it was is. messed up. It's yeah. Especially you a man. Well, Dia play her daughter in Jeffrey Dahmer to give you a sense of who she is. And Jeffrey goes, he goes, "Yeah, yeah, fine. I'll go with Dia." And he goes, "Well, how old is she?" And I said, "She's 21." And he goes, "21? That's too old. Why do you keep hooking me up with old women?" <laughs> Jeffrey. Oh my goodness. So he's all right. So he's feeling New York. So he's, he's, yeah, he's playing basketball at the, there's a, like a YMCA. He plays basketball. Um, just so we could start bonding. Jeffrey and I, we took a tennis class together and he really likes the tennis. Uh, I'm not doing so well. I can't hit pickleball. Pickleball is big right now. Have you all played pickleball? Really big, but I haven't found a pickleball instructor. I found a little tennis instructor who needs some money. And so he charged, he's really cheap. 
So we go to the person. You can just... We meet him at the park and we play mm-hmm. this tennis. The, the nets is all tore up, but we be hitting that ball. Um, so he's doing good. Uh, and, and I'm really, really busy. I don't get to spend as much time with him as I would like because right. doing a talk show, uh, this is what Miss Winfrey said to me. She said she was always at her talk show. And she said, you're going to be right. there all the time. And so there's usually, I'm on the phone all the time because decisions have to be run by me. I got to watch a video right now that we're going to play tomorrow. Um, you know, if somebody cancels, they're they're always calling me. Right. It's a little bit more, it's a lot more responsibility when it's just one person as how, opposed to a like few. How many people have positively reached out that, has it been a surprise how many people have positively reached out with great advice? Obviously, Oprah has been really exciting to talk about on here, but I'm willing to bet you've heard from anyone and everyone that you've crossed paths with in Hollywood over the last, you know, two or three years that you've been just in and about everywhere. Yeah, I yeah, it's really very cool. People have been really uh, forthcoming with advice. I I the one person I really wish I could have talked to was Ellen, but Ellen said to me, she said, "You're going to be great." You know, I wanted a little bit more in-depth advice and hopefully I can get in touch with her just to give me some, you know, do like I, what I wanted to know from people when I called them was what are the things that you wish you could have done differently? Yeah. So I could like kind of take that in, and go with it. And what are the things that you love? And so I got to talk to the creator of The View, Barbara Walters' partner, Bill Getty. I got to talk to Oprah. I got to talk to Steve Harvey's former manager who put together his talk show deal. I'm not familiar with all these names. Are they are they big stars? No, well, they're behind this. I'm thing. joking. These are the biggest, the big. That's fantastic. <laughs> hey, Key, Kim Whitley is uh, is back. I always love this. When Kim will send a text, I've been sitting here for 10 minutes. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. Key's not going to let that slide. Here comes... <laughs> Here comes, uh, here comes Kim back. I do have some pick. Kim, wait, what? Kim, you there? She's huh? Oh, please. You gotta stop. Okay, listen. No, no, I've been sitting here. I done heard about Jeffrey. I done heard about the people t- for the talk show. I done heard yeah. all Christmas stuff. Just sitting here. Yeah. Well, I you deserve a break. I, I put the other camera on. I thought I would look better. No, you look <laughs> it's not possible. Said to me this morning. What you, you know, said? Jeffrey, you know what, Jeffrey? I can't say it loud. I don't want him to hear me. You know what he said to me this morning? What? We went to Dunkin' Donuts because I'm trying to teach him different things. You know how to order, what line to stand in, and um, there was some funny stuff that happened. And I said, "Well, I'm gonna talk about tomorrow on the show." And we get in the car, and he goes, "Yeah, I guess you're gonna talk about this too." He said, "Mom, everything is not a story. Stop mm-hmm. talking." That's that mustache he getting. That's that mustache. He wasn't being disrespectful. He was like, stop talking about me. And he said, you always talk about it. And I said, well, Jeffrey, is somebody saying something? He said, no, but my teachers all watch you. And they say they watch you every day. And they say you make everything a story. And everything is not a story. And my friends know. And then they, you know, and like he called me yesterday because somebody wants to talk to me at his school to tell me that mama talk, watches the show. And he's like, stop talking about me. Don't show a picture. And I was just like, so depressed. Cause you know, that's my act, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> that's your joke. That's, there's a, a brand new joke. That's, that's a two minute so joke. Damn man, why are you talking so loud? I can't help it. I, I know, I, he I, is I, loud. I, I enjoy myself. Look at it, look at it. Okay, you're right. We need to handle that. But first, can we talk about something else real quick? Absolutely. What's going on? Can you pull the wig forward a half an inch? <laughs> Always such a good friend. It's just, it's just part. Right, boom, there's back. It's back. Whew, that was driving me crazy. It's late. It's late. I'm tired. People are dying in the comments. Oh, I done went. I done went blurry. This happened right before your show. Girl was passed out. The camera right before I came on went blurry. No, it's not blurry. It is it blurry, Chris? It's blurry. It's blurry. Wipe. Do you have a tissue? It's like it's my Kim Whitley wig. Do you have an unused napkin yeah. at your eating I station? Do, it's, it's not. No, it's not that. It's uh, it's a focus thing. It does. 
Oh, you, somebody, you? Uh, Sherry, I thought you'd think this is interesting. Kim, I have some photos I want to show you. I just sent those to Key. We'll show them in a second. Uh, Sherry, I guess I made a joke about uh, Kim hooking up with Paul Rudd on the set of, uh, what was the movie you did? Oh, I Love You Man. And somebody left a comment saying that these are graceful royalty women. Be careful what you say, Chris. And I think they meant it in a good spirit. But Sherry, why is what's up with all the Kim protection? What's going on? <laughs> Explain the behind the scenes part of that. Because Kim, I think we could kind of say whatever to each other at this point. We do a good job with it. But why are they looking out for Kim like that? For some reason, people feel like Kim, it's the dimples. That's what it is. It's Kim's dimples. You see, when she threw this bull right here, people be thinking that Kim is like helpless and that she needs She's protection. From Cleveland. She first of all, Cleveland. Cleveland. Kim be running dudes off, okay, because of that mouth <laughs> of hers. Kim okay. has been engaged six times. <laughs> Kim, let me tell you how dudes start off. I'm gonna have to go back to the beginning of the podcast because y'all, y'all have new people coming in and don't realize who Kim is. I've seen Kim with her relationships. Dudes come in and Kim be getting them. They be muscular dudes, you know. They be swagalicious, tall, built. They come in like this. Yeah, Kim, I like you. What you doing? Come over, follow me, cause I'm a lead. I'm gonna be the leader. I'm gonna do this, Kim. I'm gonna mm -hmm. take care of you. Five months in, they be like, uh, Sherry, you you know what Kim is? I, I, I'm, I'm looking for Kim. I, why, I why, why are they scratching? Why? Because you ripped their soul out of their body. And they're like, I just, I've been looking all over for, I can't find Kim. It, it, they don't crack. You, <laughs> that's that's home, can you tell I, 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 I came back? Tell us Abraham. I can't, I can't Abraham, Abraham, that's his name, Abraham. She said she was going out for drinks and for me not to worry where she'd be. She, and I said, why don't you call her? You got to know. I can't call. I can't call her. I can't call her. She restricted my phone privileges. I can't call mm -hmm. home. No, 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 no. Y'all don't believe this. Y'all don't believe this. I couldn't get out of L.A. without uh, a sore back. I mean, it was. Oh, my God. Oh, That was a chores joke. Calm down. Oh, okay, all that Miss Denman was talking before we got to California. It's kind of calmed right. down, hasn't it? We, we haven't been real hot on it. People have called that out, too, after the right. kiss on stage and everything. Yeah, you know why? Because Kim sucked your soul out, too. <laughs> she, she, goes, she put it in a jar. She goes, I finally, I got a white one. I got a white one. She, Kim got you a sun bar where black women hide their white women. <laughs> yes, she took, me, she took me to the secret bar and acted like she didn't know where it was. Well, they put the white men in the corner, but they be bringing. We didn't know where it was. White men. Bunch of bunch of mid level comics from the nineties from sitcoms are stuck back there. Like Kim, you're back for me. No, this is what y'all want to hear something funny. So Andre is watching us, right? So he he texts me, pull your wig a half an inch forward, and I said, yeah, I said, yeah, I got her good. No, he said, no, pull your wig a half an inch. <laughs> Andre, I could give you this finger. That's the problem why you've been engaged six times doing this. <laughs> My right. wig was fine, Andre. Mind your business. I got some pictures you, for you. You went from auntie to sultry in the span of a half an inch. <laughs> okay, oh, half an inch. Uh, all right. Oh my God, I ain't drinking my water. Where's Kim, my water? Okay, so get this. Yeah, Kim, I think you're going to appreciate this. Where's my bottle? My yeah, we got to get it in. Look, I, I got that much more to go. Oh, let me tell you about this water. I got yeah, yeah. yes, that water. You told me I could get it from somewhere, and you didn't tell me where I can get it. No, I've ordered it for you. Don't even worry about it. Oh, like my basket? Like my basket? No, 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 no. This, no, I ordered you the good water. This is the water that got the oxygen in it. It, it also comes from Munjaro with the high priestesses. Careful, that Sherry. I got the wig. <laughs> I know. She was making up shit. Gonna, all right, here. <laughs> Sherry, are you familiar with the uh, Chicago Botanical uh, Garden? Yeah. Uh, shout out to my friend Tracy in Chicago. I got these photos of, uh, and show the one, the best one last key, if you know what I'm talking about. Check these out. You all appreciate this. Robin Williams is a. Oh, is a, is a On a pumpkin. rose? What is that? What uh, is that, an apple? A, 
it's like a, a pumpkin at the botanical gardens they're like set up all over the place so oh, legendary okay. robin williams right kim oh, you would agree uh -huh. john mulaney he's big time he's, he's oh look from, at that yeah john he's from mulaney. chicago hannibal burris big chicago comic. Hannibal burris was the one who, who dropped the dime on bill cosby <laughs> set that <laughs> off didn't he uh check this out kim i think you'll appreciate the closer <laughs> oh sherry's a pumpkin oh my gosh Shout I gotta take to a picture of that. Send me that picture. I'll Wait, send you the is, photo. Is that I'm a gap? Is that a gap? Wait, is that a gap in between your teeth? That's why I got on Invisalign. See, everybody can see it, kid. No, <laughs> no, this is a picture from 1999. You ain't, your gap ain't that big. Yes, it is. Let me my get gap the groove in the pumpkin. She got mm -hmm. a picture on the pumpkin. I got a picture on the pumpkin. Oh my gosh, can you send me those pictures so I can show them on the um? It's a big year for you, Sherry. Daytime talk, oh, NAACP Image Award, Gap carved, in my carved, carved into a pumpkin. So those are carved. Thank you, thank you, everybody. We got an NAACP Image Award for this crazy. Well, you two did. We are focused. Oh, Chris never got his award. Are you kidding me? Wow, Chris. I it's think it's funny. I think it. No, no, no. I've, I was told it was uh, reordered. <laughs> Wait, wait, like, wait. It must have got lost in the mail. Co conveniently, the one Caucasian on the trophy list. <laughs> Midcoast wait. Media's trophy. Um, yeah, that's, that's great. No, key. I got something for you. Oh. Leah Pump, the Pump Brothers, but Leah Pump has a foundation, Act Like a Lady, is such a great foundation. But one uh, Sunday, she had this, at her church, she had this award ceremony. I guess she does it every year. And she awarded me... Uh, and honored me for my gifts. Beautiful crystal award. Like I, I was like, oh my God, this award is a piece of art. I leave the, I leave the award and I hand it to Val Chandler, my girlfriend. Val takes it and I'm walking, come on Joshua. And all I hear is this behind me, oops. It hits the ground in the parking lot. First of all, Val, why didn't you put it in the box or the bag? She's carrying it. She drops it. It shatters over the whole parking lot. I'm standing there looking at my award, and I remember they got Leah. Leah came out. She was like, oh, oh, Kim. She was like, oh, oh, you know what? I'll just order you another one. And she's so sweet. So, Chris, you're going to get yours when I get mine. <laughs> <laughs> and that's saying something because she ain't got her award yet. Leah and her mom was like, I ain't ordered no more awards. I know she was like, that thing was too expensive. I am not ordering her another one. stupid friend. Pick up, pick up that piece of glass that got your name on it. And I thought about that, but they were sweeping it up. And I was like, <laughs> oh, they I'm ran like, in. That's a, wait, read some comments. Oh, there's and so I many thought, comments. I got that many awards. You know I'm still tripping on that, right? I'll send you one of mine. Uh, Who even I've got a uh, I've got a district basketball really? championship for 2001, really? a couple karate trophies. Like, come on, <laughs> this That's was gonna be it for me. I'm gonna, you, I'm gonna send you a good one. I'm gonna send you one of my Gracie awards. <laughs> and don't think I won't put my name over it. Sherry, you I'm got the, some this year. You were awarded, You got the award for friendship from Kim for the fruit of the month award. <laughs> I did. My, you know, and Kim knowing her behind probably signed me up for that damn. I'm mm. probably gonna get this thing once a month. This, All right. You know, I'm probably getting this thing once a month. You probably signed me up for the Fruit Club. Fruit Club. So I get it once a month. All right, you want these comments? Yeah. MM says that I'm. MM says when Chris gets Chris gets more tan next summer, resubmits his picture. NAACP will finally come through. Andre's clowning in the comments. Thomas Br Bristos uh, laughing in the comments. Darletha, Kim, tell the guys read Joshua a book, and I'll be back later. <laughs> That's funny. Read you Joshua a book. You just hear a Mustang rev in the distance. Like, oh, I guess somebody else is here for That's it. That's very funny. Linda says, Kim, that was so real and funny. You leaned back, twisted your lip, and said, she got a picture on a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Are you jealous, Kim? I'm good. Yeah. Do you think Cleveland oh, Botanical... No, you ain't got to worry about it. You ain't got... Right, but Botanical Garden, I'm putting... The... I've already emailed them. <laughs> just like I emailed the billboard people. I done emailed the Botanical Garden in Cleveland. I was like, look, if y'all got a pumpkin, I need my face on it. <laughs> First of all, I want to say, and we're talking about my Halloween show. Um, when you said 
When I said, oh, you got a billboard for your big head, how you feel? You was like, I said, I called him. I said, Sherry got a billboard. I want a billboard. <laughs> I was cracking up. I was Oh, I was I was I got Sherry got one. We motivate. We motivate each other. Audible, download Audible. Search Kim K Y M to hear. It's an Audible sitcom, a sitcom for your ears. It is about uh, a, a woman who's a C list or a D lister comic and actress just trying to get a life together. She has adopted this baby from this woman who was on drugs, played by Jess Hilarious. She's got a crazy set of friends. Uh, David, the late David A. Oh, Arnold, brilliant. So Jess Hilarious. Uh, uh, Cynthia, Lewis, Lewis, Cynthia Jenna Lewis, Kim Coles. When I tell you she's got so many people on this Audible, it is brilliantly written by Lena Waithe and uh, executive produced by Lena and Kim Whitley. Okay. And, and Mark I'm telling you, is my head writer too. Oh, you're not going to uh, be disappointed. Not it one is white character. Not one white character. You can. A lot, lot of white characters. characters. Oh, a whole bunch of white people. You ain't, you That's must not have episode one. You got well, all he ain't listened to it. Thank oh, I you. To it. Thank I listen to it. I'm just and I'm you, just still curious. My my email is empty, so I'm just curious. <laughs> You, your voice is not white enough. Oh, I'll take that as a. <laughs> well, what's to say, Chris? Y'all Key, down. Key's, a, Key's shaking her head. She's like, "That's true." <laughs> you guys That's always bad. want the dorky white voice. Get the audible. It's Kim. It's so funny, you guys. Please. And here's the thing: Can you tell your friends? The same people that got us this NAACP Image Award, y'all voted over and over and over for us. Could you please tell your friends and family to download the Audible and listen to the Kim series? You're going to love it. And please share that information with everybody. And then on uh, Monday, uh, today is uh, today is Wednesday. Uh, mm -hmm. Tomorrow, Mark Curry's on the show. Yeah. I don't remember who was on the show. April Ryan was on there uh, yesterday. Um, but... Monday is Halloween. So I have a Halloween episode that I'm going to be doing Monday. I got my costume and everything. Can you I share, can share costume details? I, it, they're really good. We went, we went all out. When I tell you, okay. when I tell you, I, I said, go Emmy, 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 Emmy. Emmy they have right. the, the plans and designs that they have come up with. The entire crew is very, very excited uh for this halloween show i'm very excited but i can't tell you anything more so it's coming on on october 31st which i think is monday i think yeah it Whatever is day it's huh? monday it is yeah it's absolutely monday. don't so put this. nothing heavy on your head and wobble and just be careful not to get overheated and all that <laughs> well you know because i'd be hot flash and i ain't took my right home. be careful when mm. i tell you I gotta go on a, you know, how's your love life? That's what I'm All gonna right. ask. It sounds like a two person uh, shot key. Dude, I'm just gonna ask him. <laughs> just, you, know, you, you looking you, good. You know what? I feel good right now. I'm um, going through that David stuff. Man, and every, just another friend in Detroit, Melissa, she just passed away. I was like, just every day you get a phone call. It's a lot. Um, but, you know, what I've, gone through is that I, what i know i guess for sure is that if you wake up every day you got to move forward you got to keep on keeping on you know What's and the thing that you do that scares you now stand up very difficult to go on stage again i went saturday i had fun that was the first time when i did the celebration of life i didn't like it i was not energetic i didn't feel good so what scares me is doing stand up again uh, did, uh Kim, I'll interject. You did a, a benefit for John Witherspoon's uh family. I oh, believe. that's right. I forgot. So I've been on stage twice. You're right. I did do a benefit. Can, that was fun. Can you How tell us did about you those? do when you when you when you went and did stand up in the benefit? Well, the benefit I did well, but I had um um 
Bill Bellamy on stage with me. He was about to walk off stage and I grabbed his hand. <laughs> That's I did. great. That's great. I did. And he stood up there and I did my, sh- I did it. And um, I got a standing O. I couldn't believe it. But I you was just, I was, you know, when you just go in, I was mad at Joshua. And just like you said, I just went in on this little boy and what, and you know, people laugh at your pain because they'd been through it. So I yeah. started talking about just, I was just mad at Joshua. I had just gotten in a whole little argument with him before I got there. And then the other night I just talked about, you know, getting older and, and going through all the things we go through. And I think that starts you in and then you get to your material and I hadn't done it. So I think that scares me living being an older mother scares me that I'm going to, am I going to get my son ready for this world? Um, I sat and wrote, girl got me a notebook out and wrote my last will and Testament, even though I have it, I have a will and I have a trust, but we forget to um, update them every couple of years. Cause I remember the last one I left people stuff. I don't even speak to anymore. I was like, Oh no, we got to fix I that. Updated my girl. I still had Jeffrey's daddy. I was like, Oh, let me change this right here. I le- had left everything to Jeffrey's dad. Did oh, nobody man. That's everything. Wild. He would have been so daggone happy. He sure would have. But you do. You have to go back and check. You know, and then what I did learn when I was talking to Quincy Smith, Quincy, my boy, he helps me. He said, Kim, think about Prince. Prince had a will and testament, I'm sure. But he left it in the house or you leave it wherever it is. You got to take and put, not saying nothing about his sister, don't, not saying she did anything. But if you have more than one, then there's no question. So he said, you need to make copies. You got to leave one with a family member. You leave one at your house. You leave one with a cousin or whoever. And you leave one in a safety deposit box. Then people can't say, well, they left everything to me. What? And then somebody can pull it out and be like, no, I got it right here. Yeah, that's one thing I did not realize until I talked to you when you were talking to Quincy of make a copy of your papers because also what happens, like when my mom um, had passed away, she didn't leave it. I know she had something, but we didn't know where it was. So everybody got to fighting about they would, this is what Laverne would have left me. It was a mess. And so I do say a lot of people don't like to think about that, but it's so... Like life is too short. Like rest in peace, Leslie Jordan. Uh, oh, a wonderful man. He got into a car accident. Didn't expect that to happen. It, you know, um, you got <clears throat> you got to think of these things because if you have anything that you want to protect, leave it in a trust or a, uh, even a will that says where your couch is going to go. Because that yes. just brings out the worst in people. And this way, it's all taken care of. Then you can forget about it. But it's all taking, and people are not scrambling. I have somebody, uh, his stepmom just passed away. And when I tell you everybody is coming in, it's so much fighting because she didn't have any kind of will. So it's a good thing to just do to protect the, your loved ones so the government don't come in taxing your stuff. Because if you don't have no kind of will and trust, the government will come in mm-hmm. with the mistake taxes. Yeah. Oh, but so, so it is, even though it's kind of doom and gloom, do it. Uh, I was going to say, Kim, um, I did stand up as well Saturday because I was in Atlanta. Oh, that's awesome. And oh, right. I, I didn't even tell you about that. Right. What I, happened? And I texted Kim, Rodney Perry. I was in Atlanta because I had I, every week I have to go and meet uh, the affiliates, the networks yep. that play my show in the different cities. And so I called Rodney Perry and I said, I have some time. I want to go up. So Rodney uh, met me at the club. And this happened to be more white people because he took me to another club that Tony Rock was headlining at. And it was all black folks. And so I texted Kim and I said, Kim, I got to go up. I got to do 10 minutes. And I don't remember none of my act because I haven't done. The thing about stand up is you, you want to keep that muscle yeah. going. It's like the stand up like lubricates that comedy muscle. And the moment you stop for any length of time, it feels like getting back on a bike. You yep. got to you got to warm it up again, and so I was panicking because I had it wasn't that I I can do ninety minutes on stage, but mm-hmm. all of this material was in my head, 
and I didn't know what to pull from. I didn't know how to make it smooth. And I was panicking. And it always helps me when I can text Kim because she will come and give me uh, usually good advice. But then she was like, talk about your hair. I was like, what is she talking about? I, what, are, what is she talking about? Talk about all that hair. And I said, Kim, I don't have, and I said, I texted her and I said, I have no material. Oh, she said, talk about the show. That's what she said. And I said, Kim, I have no material, no stand up comedy material about my show. Like that. And then, but it helped to talk to Kim to get it concise because I was only doing 10 minutes. So I went up and I but just wait, wanted to tell up what I said about because I saw you on TV and you had seven pounds of hair on. And that's what I, and you're right, you're right. Texting you was just cracking jokes about what you're not supposed to talk about, Jeffrey. But go ahead. Talk about him no more. Uh, but I got Sorry. up and I did, I did well. Then we went to the club that was like, you know, this was the one late at night where they like, you better be funny. And Tony oh, Rock was you. there. Yes, Tony Rock was there with all his boys. And I was the only girl. So he was there with all his boys. And I just was like, okay, let me pull together. I just want to connect. You know that fear kind of hits you yep. when you ain't done it in a long time? And that's why I miss David so much because he would always encourage me to go to the club. He would always encourage me about my material. Because you both got, love stand up. Because I love stand up. And I would get to the club and no matter how many I would do, David would either say, I'm still better than you. Or I would look at David and go, I'm better than you. And I, I missed being able to text him, but I went up, um, I, I did extremely well. You know, the one thing like the self-talk, I was like, they're gonna know me as they're gonna know you, Kim. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I walk on stage and smile, they're gonna like me because I've proven myself to them over the years or they've seen me on TV. So they're gonna be excited. Number two, I'm in a city where it's like, they don't get to see- They don't get to see you. Big names come up. So that's working for me. And number three, I know I'm funny. Like that, that just has not changed. And I was like, Sherry, you know you're funny. No matter what joke you do, you've done it so many times, you know it's going to work. You just got to connect. So I was trying to connect with the audience, which connecting I really- is, Yeah, connecting. The reason why I didn't connect like I wanted to is because John came, um, my bodyguard came, and Edie came. So, and when I say bodyguard, they now, because I got a talk show, they give me a security guard that travels with me everywhere. Yeah, I was going to say, oh. Kim, you're just going to let that go by? You're not going to... No, you don't understand. Gonna... You know, I, my mom, I was like, you know the next thing I was... She, okay. she knew. She okay. looked, you understand? She was Sherry ready. looked yeah. at me, knew I was about to say something, yeah. and she took it. She knew I was going to be like, bodyguard, huh? That's what we doing? I did. I told Kim. I said, Kim, I got a, I got a bodyguard now. I got a security guy. That was he like, Does, he have a, Does he have a cool oh. nickname like Hawk? Oh, is it James? It's James. No, he don't have no cool nickname. Like hey, James, James is huge. Is always, he's huge. He's huge. He's tall and strong. Does he go by, with, he does he go by like Tiny? Go by Tiny? Like and he's from Philly. He from Philly and he talk like this. Come on over here. He He's huge. Uh, it's a whole, so he, tra wherever I go, he, James travels with me. So Jay, I tried to sneak away from James, but I couldn't. So he was at the club. Edie, my assistant was at the club and John was there. So I was nervous because they were sitting right in the front row. And James had his phone up like this the whole time. Recording. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Crazy. He said, because I want to play it over and watch it again. You were so funny. So I, I want to see it again. <laughs> But it was, it was, um, I was nervous because people, when people, you know, are there watching you, you can't be worst. as strong as you want to be. So I didn't connect, but I did well. They, they liked everything. I feel like my baby hair is popping out. They wanna, liked everything I did. Sherry, I want to give you even more love. Uh, I don't know if there's a guy named Wavy that tours with Tony. He's a nice dude. Jordan. Yeah, younger. Wavy. Yeah, Wavy McGuire. Shout out to him. Uh, there's Jordan Rock tours with Tony a lot. His other brother. But Tony. We're talking, he's in another stratosphere, stand-up wise. Oh, Tony's so funny. He's, uh, Tony's coming on my lap. Tony's that's, coming on my show. That's no, he is no joke. He is very talented. You know, I just, I love Tony Rock because when he, after Chris, he was like, you know, don't even think you could come up on the stage and be doing something to me. And he was like, you going to hit my brother? You hit my motherfucking brother? <laughs> I love that. 
That's the sexiest thing I ever heard. I know he just had a baby. No disrespect to his lady. Oh, he did said, have a baby, Tony. Baby, yes. And I, when Tony said, you hit my motherfucking brother, I just, it turns me on every time. I love that. But he, um, so I went up to, because Kim and I, we were getting prepared. We about to hit this road. Two funny mamas. You got two dates booked in St. Louis. You have a whole thing waiting here. So <laughs> hope you're ready. Well, St. Louis is the first city that we do. Because right now, Kim and I are talking about whether we want to do the Two Funny Mamas podcast or whether we want to go on the road and do stand up. That's what that's what the holdup is. We we haven't sat down and talked. Whatever so maybe you do, I'll be great. Tell us, how many people are in this room? Uh, you've got eight hundred people watching. So ask the eight hundred people. Would you rather see us go on the road to do the Two Funny Mamas podcast? What we're doing right now? We're gonna be sitting in chairs talking, or would you want to go on the road and see Two Funny Mamas? Kim and I do stand up. Oh, that's a hard that, one. They're both funny. They're both funny. One is a little bit more easier to do setup wise, which is our stand up. Um, in in the, the stand up, what the, what the difference is, y'all, if you want to know, with the podcast, is we get on stage and we talk together for about ten or fifteen minutes, Kim and I. Right. And we have Chris there, we have Andre there. We sit in chairs. We'll interview a guest, maybe. Uh, on the stage stand up we get on stage we talk together for oh, about 15 20 minutes together then we each do stand up individually then we come back at the end and we do a q a yeah so it's a comedy night it's pretty uh, a lot of comments saying both so that's a that's a good one okay, out, of, out, of, out of the gate it's not even close but we'll 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 get back to the, we'll let some votes trickle in. Yeah, so stand-up comedy from Two Funny Mamas. When we get on stage, we talk together. We do I got comedy my together. Teeth. Then we each do it individually. Then we come back for a Q&A. That's stand-up comedy. Or Two Funny Mamas podcast, where we do this for an hour. <laughs> right. In 90 minutes. A 90 minute show. So, oh, but nice. nonetheless, we will be going out on a once a month from February till I think November. Is it November? February or March? We've got, we had March the last time we talked. Oh, did we, we have March? Yeah. yeah February is okay. a big month for the TV show. You got a lot going on. Okay. So we're going to <sighs> March. Um, so I know you all probably need to get going. Uh, Kim, what's happening in your world? Yeah. We lost to... Kim. We, did, no, we just I, lost I, Kim. I, she, we've, you we, see, we physically, see we, yeah. we have lost Kim. When she starts jonesing out like she on meth, we lost Kim. That's it. She's gone. <laughs> uh, if uh, I know we talked about it before, but speaking of stand-up comedy, um, I wanted to say, I didn't say this. We pulled up the flyer last time, Sherry. Do you remember when Wendell was on about a year ago and I just dropped it that I was like, hey, this stand up that was supposed to do a show with us was in a terrible car wreck. And right, you right, right. all right, came, yes. came through. The fans came through. You literally made her Christmas. She has little children. And that was Precious J, right? So you all helped out with yeah. that. It was a big deal. And I just wanted to say thanks again. And she's on our upcoming stand up show on November 3rd here in St. Louis. Check this out. That's Precious J. On the left, that's no, November 3rd. If you're in St. Louis, come check out the show. Tell us if you're a Two Funny Mamas fan, and uh, we'll say, hey, just wanted to get that out there. So come no, check out. Chris, I thought Chris was going to say, tell us if you're a Two Funny Mamas fan. We're going to give you $10 off a ticket. He said, we'll say, hey. <laughs> we'll say, hey. That's right. I'll pose for a selfie <laughs> if you paid full price. I understand. No, if yeah, you're yeah, a two, no. you know we'll hook you up if you're a Two Funny Mamas fan. That's no joke. Seriously, you all have been so great to the ladies and uh, and us, too. So. So I'll tell her to say, hey, we said, hey, mm -hmm. and uh, my teeth are hurting really bad. I got to go take some Tylenol. Um, Your teeth are hurting and my tooth got something in it. Okay. It ain't really my tooth. It's like between the it's teeth. It's in and out it's so voraciously. It can't be an apple. I know it ain't no apple. And girl, I got a photo shoot tomorrow and Friday. Oh, I'm gonna be you got to go to bed. 
you cannot do a photo shoot and you didn't get any sleep because you're gonna have bags under your eyes. It's gonna real, be real bad. So go to bed. Okay. I gotta take this hair off uh, and the makeup. So so before you yeah. go, certainly plenty of fans for both, uh, but it ends up being about sixty percent want the podcast over the stand up. But you know that's wow. That's still- up for that, I wouldn't have thought that was you, Sherry. I thought they would have been like, stand up, stand up. Okay, well, that probably ain't going to happen, y'all. So. It might happen. Oh, oh. The podcast is fun. It's, if, in my opinion, if you put something together that you enjoy, then it's kind of elements of both. So, you know. Well, why would you ask them? Y'all watch the Sherry show. Okay. <laughs> I would like to do that. I just want to know what people think. Okay. It's fun. It's good talking. That way, I can't go find my way. One percent owner of two funny mamas. Oh boy, we're probably gonna do stand up. I think we can do the podcast. Kim don't know how to do a hostile takeover. She has no idea. I don't know what's happening to these ladies. Obviously, watch the Sherry Show daily. Check SherryShowTV.com. Oh, God. It's the number one new talk show. Don't there it is. That. Be sure to check that out. Support Kim and uh, and get that audible. I highly recommend it. I did listen to it. Yeah. Thank you. I was very happy to hear that. The audible, Kim Whitley. Yeah. Oh, gosh. That was fun. So proud of you. When are you going to be able to announce your new project? I, I got to ask them tomorrow. Do we do these photos? I'm like, come on, y'all. People want to know what I'm doing. You know who asked me to give them the exclusive? B, B. Scott. He was like, let me know first. I was like, oh, let me see if we can work that out, B. You know who gonna have the exclusive? Who? Oh, my bad. Okay. First of all, watch your face. You better okay. come on my show and be announcing, doing the Zoom doing right. this hey girl i got something to tell you i got something to tell you you don't understand how much joy that brings me you're so irritated i was cracking up and where that wig i bought you from the mujaro where they shaved the yes I, I i i was gonna grab it this morning i was like damn where that damn wig i was gonna surprise you with it but i think it's on my orange chair under some clothes i gotta find it Sherry, what I, if I grow my hair long enough that I can give Kim some of my hair for a wig? Let me see your hair, Chris. Uh, it's not. It's it's jumbled up under a under oh. headphones and stuff right now, so it's not it's not in its purest natural form for you. But you know what, Chris? So I, long. It's so long. It's so long. I hate to tell you this, Chris. White hair don't work as well as like the Asian oh, hair. Weird. Yeah, for weeks. Oh, you don't like you don't feel hair. it. Uh, I know y'all y'all get y'all get the privilege for everything, but it don't work so no. well for weeks. You don't, feel, you don't, don't want to feel. You don't want to feel like you've got flattened flattened horse's mane hanging off the back of your yeah. hair. I mean, y'all even be getting weeds. So we supposed to get you, use your hair, and y'all be weaving your hair. I just hope that uh, you, Kim. I just hope you realize that you know that's a sign of love, and it's better than a fruit basket. You know what it is. It what is. a great note to end on. I got blurry again. All right, that we've lost him. My teeth are killing me. I got to take okay. some time, and I got to this, go to bed. This is this week's show. I don't want people DMing me on Instagram. Where are the ladies? This is the show this week. If you want a highlight show, maybe let me know. We could maybe make that happen. But these two have a very small amount of time. This is the show this week. So there you go. And the they show. could. And if you and my hair is going back, can you see it's going back? It just slid back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you I, just like watch. A- if you need a taste, go on YouTube and watch the episodes of Sherry Show that you missed. Look, like that. Very Look, true. Yeah. Uh uh-uh, uh 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 uh. I know girls who wear their hair like that. If you don't Me stop, <laughs> I'm like, oh, you got a little forehead. <laughs> just be that much, just that much forehead because the wig is too far down. Oh, I got to go make dinner for Joshua. I got to go. My teeth hurt and I got to take this hair yeah. off. I'm hot. Shout out to all Enjoy the two Funny Mamas food. fans. Enjoy your Love fruit you basket. Thank y'all for tuning in. We appreciate y'all. Save I me a- fruit basket. Thank you, friend, for my fruit basket. Save me a mango. Save me a mango. I'll save you, I'll save you. I'm going to give you, send you the diabetic stuff that she threw in there. The M&Ms and all of that that I can't eat. Oh, gosh. Bye, ladies. All right. See y'all. Bye, everybody. Mamas. Too funny, mamas.
us. Too funny, my 